After hosting a wrestling tournament where she was humiliated, Princess Anne felt deeply embarrassed as the participants shook their heads and walked away to avoid her. The villagers watching the tournament also left, whispering about her body odor and holding their noses in disgust. Aaron approached her with a look of both concern and sadness for her distress. Anne apologized for all her wrongdoings, and Aaron pulled her into a comforting embrace, nuzzling into his shoulder. Aaron said, I have forgiven you and I want to be with you. I don't care what people will say. I love you from the rising of the sun to its setting. I don't care about your father's wealth or heritage. All I want is you. With a whisper, Aaron added, come away with me. Anne looked up to see the same joyful drummer from the bush. Love and hope shined in his eyes. With delightful laughter, Anne once again smelled only warmth and comfort instead of the disgust from the villagers. No splendid royal ball or fawning attention from kings could replace this feeling of home and belonging with Aaron. She took his hand. Aaron walked Anne home. They both agreed to meet the next day. Aaron left the village that night. Princess Anne rested uneasy in her chambers, her mind plagued by distressing thoughts. She kept replaying the utter humiliation she had endured earlier that day at the wrestling tournament when her severe body odor had suddenly returned. The crowd had turned on Anne viciously. She vividly remembered their cruel taunts, pointing fingers, disgusted scowls, and the way they all shrank away, covering their noses in revulsion. Hot tears spilled down Anne's cheeks as she recalled a rotten tomato striking her shoulder, hurled by some hateful village boy, followed by peals of laughter. Anne felt completely crushed. She had worked so hard to make herself beautiful and desirable with lovely gowns and jewels in hopes of making a fine match. But it had all been thrown back in her face when her curse of a foul-smelling affliction returned. Yet, Anne's weeping softened as she reflected on how her dear Aaron had rushed to embrace her after she fled the chaotic scene. When no one else would come near the putrid odor she emitted, he alone had wrapped her shaking body tight in his arms, whispering comforting words in her ear. Aaron still loved her, in spite of everything. Anne knew she must get to the root of why this curse kept coming back. She resolved to go right away to speak with her father, King Charles. As monarch, he possessed knowledge of how this plaguing curse befell her so long ago. There must be more she could try to break its cruel hold over her. Anne rose swiftly from her ornate bed and tucked her night robe tight around her frame. She lit an oil lamp to light her way through the shadowy corridors and slipped out into the darkness. The night air was warm, filled with the chatter of crickets and the flutter of moths. Anne followed the stone path briskly to her father's private chambers. Rapping lightly, she called through the carved wooden door. Father, I apologize for disturbing you so late, but I desperately need answers. Come in, my child, the muffled reply came. Princess Anne turned the brass handle and entered softly. There she found the king sitting at his desk, brow furrowed, surrounded by scattered parchments. He seemed to be puzzling over something, too. You also cannot sleep, father? Anne asked. No, I am distressed by what happened to you today, he said heavily, shaking his head. Please, daughter, come sit beside me here. The king shifted his chair toward Anne, taking both her delicate hands in his weathered ones. Once she had settled next to him, his eyes searched her face sadly. Anne took a breath. Father, I hoped speaking with you I might finally understand. Why have I been cursed with this hideous odor since childhood? Surely you know the full tale. I beg you, please help me comprehend why I am tormented so. Squeezing his daughter's hands, the king spoke slowly. Dearest Anne, there is a painful story from your childhood that I must share, though it breaks my heart to tell it. It is time you learned the whole truth of events long ago and how they shape the sorrows of today.